What are the Beats headphones of your hobby? What makes you cringe to see others flexing? I play hockey. Tinted visors. If a guy has a tinted visor don't plan on him coming off the ice for a shift change or passing the puck at all. Tinted visors are intended to help with post concussion syndrome. However your point still stands because that's not why most people wear them. As an amateur alcoholic, I cringe when I see someone walk into a party with an $80 bottle of whiskey only to mix it with coke. This is going to sound stupid but colored handcuffs. They are not insanely expensive but we have had a huge fad of officers buying colored handcuffs and crap. I do security, and wearing like 3 or 4 or 8 pairs of handcuffs on one belt. It drives me freaking crazy. Until halfway through the second sentence I thought your hobby was BDSM. Graphic designer here. Almost any holistic or natural health shop uses Papyrus as their logo's font. What a terrible font. Professional pilot here. And while not a hobby it makes me cringe to see student pilots wearing 4 bar epaulets. I think you get the right to wear 4 bars as captain with thousands of hours of experience flying hundreds of people around. Not flying yourself around in a Cessna 172 they're maverick. To vanities. They're not awful, but they're really overpriced. And their sales strategies are a pain in the butt. Oops, I poured too much in the bag. Is that alright? Sure, but I'll only pay what I asked for. I've gotten in fights before over Leon Paul fencing equipment. Outrageously expensive equipment that I have never found to be any better than much cheaper domestic vendors like Absolute Fencing. I mean, I've known plenty of incredible fencers with Leon Paul gear that suits them just fine. But if you go to a tournament and see some low skill maximum aggression jackass walking around like he owns the place, I can guarantee you he'll be decked out in Leon Paul. I know not everyone that is into fencing is rich, but I'm totally picturing you sitting at a giant mahogany desk in golf clothing with a greyhound sitting next to you while you type this. Isn't that right Miffy? Leon Paul is for doucher bags. Free prawn hub is just as good as your fancy premium prawn hub. Prawn hub is entry level anyways. Do's videos if you want to find some specific videos and don't mind seeing thumbnails of gross crap. Firefighter here. Any of those I fight what you fear type hero worship shirts are super cringe worthy in our field. Patron tequila. I work at a large liquor store, and whenever someone acts like patron is the good stuff I shake my head. Patron is the beats by Dre of tequila. Thank you for reaffirming that my alcohol consumption is a hobby. Rosetta Stone. The most ineffective thing you can buy for several hundreds of dollars. You can learn more through free materials like Duolingo, Mango, or Memrise. Or websites like Language Transfer or Say Something In. Want to pay a little more? Italki, Busoyu, Babbel. Not afraid to invest some money for big quality? Michelle Thomas. For table tennis players, I'm sure there are at least 11 of us. Tenergy. All of the Tenergy. Every other Imperial TIE pilot out there is going gaga over the TIE Defender. And yes, I get it. It's got heavy shielding and 6 forward fire weapons, 2 iron cannon and 4 laser. It's got good speed and radial velocity too. However, veteran pilots know that the TIE Avenger is, credit for credit, a better craft. Initially you think slower, weaker, fewer guns. But he's up on the specs a bit and you'll see why Marok Steely kept his Avenger even when the rest of his flight squadron upgraded to Defender. First, Fix cannon rarely decide victory in dogfights. Why? Because by the time you've closed to the 1.5 kilometers of effective range, you're already one full click within effective warhead range. The enemy will fire their warheads at you and you'll do the same back. Then jink and weave to try to avoid getting hit. Second, Starfighter level shielding is a last ditch resort in dogfights. While a defender might take much longer to chip away than an avenger with laser cannon, we've already established above that cannon rarely determine survivability in a dogfight, warheads do, and take the simple, cheap advanced concussion missile and see how many it takes to punch through a defender's shields and its hull at once. That's right, too. The same amount that it takes to kill an Avenger. Your foe will close with two ACMs and scramble to kill you at a distance where your extremely expensive shielding won't matter. Third, the Defender has three panels arranged around its cockpit in a trefoil array. Each panel is the same size as one of the TIE Avenger panels, and the Avenger has two. 
This makes for a much larger cross section, both frontal and lateral, and thus a more welcoming target for missile tracking and the occasional laser shot. Ultimately, starfighter engagements are no longer won by blasting your enemy with lasers or by taking more numerous hits than your enemy while surviving. The increasing use of beam weapons, especially tractor beams that slow a craft's turn rate, counteract pure speed and maneuverability. The common use of warheads eliminates the tactical benefit of expensive shielding. Pound for pound, the Avenger is a more worthy investment for the Imperial Navy. Although the superior Rebel Starfighter performance at Yavin has shaken traditional Imperial war philosophy, it must not draw the Imperials into a spending trap. Investing in diminishing returns in agility, speed, fixed cannon, and shielding, when these elements are becoming rapidly obsolete, I hear that Grand Admiral Thrawn is pursuing a separate philosophy in starfighter design, one that is built around tractor beams and warheads. People who have never owned a tarantula in their life getting the biggest, meanest, and fastest spiders because they look cool. Don't get a freaking tea. Blondie if your only spider experience is petting one at a kid's birthday party. Cooking. Oh man. So many of these. Cutting boards for starters. Too many people have tiny cutting boards. If you can't fit your knife diagonally, it's too small. And for the love of Jeebus, stop buying glass cutting boards. All you are doing is destroying your knife. Fancy salt. Get some normal kosher salt. You can spend $5 at a restaurant supply store and have enough for a year. Only owning non-stick pans. Non-stick has its place. But unless you're doing eggs or a really tender fish, you need stainless steel. Aluminum is okay, but you can't use it for acidic foods. And cast iron is amazing for so many things and really cheap. Cutco knives. They're not the worst, but you really shouldn't be proud of having them. A giant knife set. A real cook needs three, maybe four knives. And that is including a bread knife that is just for, you guessed it, bread. Chef's knife, paring knife, fish knife, bread's knife, if you are wondering. Anything branded Food Network. Some of their stuff is good, but it is all overpriced. Just like beads. Kink. 50 shades of grey brand anything. It's all garbage from the $20 ruler to their crappy pleather floggers. One can get any amount of great gear with the slightest Google for a fraction of the price. They are simply riding off the name of a horrid franchise that has public recognition. As a good friend of mine said, I get all my kink gear from Bunnings, Australian hardware store. Trucks. I live in a rural state and it's about 60% or more trucks on the road. Not the kind you can use, though. The fat-hipped sparkling clean lifted ones with blue headlights. I worked at Costco and I've had several people line their whole truck with blankets and shout watch the paint over and over while we load a couch into their precious vehicle. Using the truck for its intended purpose gives them heart palpitations. One couple opted to drive their truck home and swap it for their other car because they couldn't rationalize the risk of loading something into the back. To me it's like driving a combine and being horrified at the suggestion of running it through some grass. Why did you buy a truck? If you want to baby a vehicle and waste fuel at least get something sporty and cool. Live target fishing lures. Most fish strike a lure based on noise and movement, not the strikingly realistic details on your superior expensive fancy lure. Teacher here. Other teachers who wear teacher worship shirts with sayings such as, I teach, what's your superpower? Sorry honey, your crap stinks too, get over yourself. Nurse here, they sell that crap for us, too, they're awful. Ghillie suits and airsoft. I know you want to look like a badass seal operator or something, but you're just going to overheat out there in the sun and you don't really ever have the opportunity to really use it for sniping. Just stick with BDUs like the rest of us and save yourself the money. Fashion watches, or watches from brands that aren't known for their watches. Games Workshop brushes or any synthetic brush for miniature painting. They are fine for base coats but anything outside that and they just don't hold a point so are useless. WNN Series 7 are amazing and really not that expensive. Personally for me though, even the other lesser brand Sable brushes are just as useless. People always rate them as as good as WNN but cheaper. Well you are honestly talking literally 1 or 2 pounds cheaper and no they aren't as good. The handle will be flimsy or light, there may be less act all hair so the tip is too soft. 
Spend the extra quid and just get the actual best. Monster audio cables. You don't always get what you pay for. Reebok MMA shirts. MMA gloves in a boxing Muay Thai gym. Custom barrels bells on clarinets. They really aren't doing much different for you, other than looking visually striking. Cabalist tents are seen the same as Walmart tents in the eyes of avid outdoor enthusiasts. As a climber, I'm hard pressed to think of anything that would be the Beats headphones, specially related to not being worth the price. I do see a lot of people wearing the sport of a solutions who won't even touch problems that would require such a shoe. To explain that further, if you're just getting into climbing you don't need to buy one of the most expensive shoes on the market to make it up the wall. I would suggest getting a cheap pair that feels good for you. Climb the crap out of them, you're going to destroy them, and then buy that shoe again, destroy it again, and then maybe you can start thinking about upgrades. This is because until you get some technique, you're not using the shoe properly and burning through the rubber too quickly. As a gearhead, Sparco or Piloti racing shoes for track days. I get that there are benefits to the shoes but they're not really any better than your normal shoes. It just makes me think that here is a person I'll have to watch out for because they probably aren't as skilled as they think they are. Hum. I just noticed my two things are shoes. I do care about shoes a lot. And on that note, I think anyone who shrink wraps their Jordans is insane. Well Black Diamond always struck me as being the loudest, marketing wise, but yet it's definitely a sport where no one can churn out cheap gear without facing liability problems in the near future. If they print 22kn on their binder, then by dang it'll hold 22kn. Shut. Wayne Goss brushes. First he tried making a big deal about makeup brushes being too expensive and wanting to do a quality line but at affordable rates. My $215 brush set is affordable, better quality lines for less, and far superior for slightly more, like Haku Hodo. I always thought it was intended as a luxury line, you know, him being him. Honestly, Holly Davidson motorcycles, based on the obscene cost, they are incredibly underpowered and have always been quite behind the competition for technological improvements. And a lot of the riders are posers. I feel this very well matches beats. Overpriced, underperforming, and, most of the time, used by posers. Rubik's brand speed cubes. A regular Rubik's brand is pretty much the worst cube out there. Their speed cubes are a bit better but they don't even hold a candle to a decent knockoff speed cube. Plus I don't even think you can tension a Rubik's brand. Tensioning lets you adjust how tightly the cubelets are held in. Too loose and you might pop, too tight and it'll be tough to turn quickly. Everyone has a different tension they like. While I agree that Rubik's brand cubes don't come close to real speed cubes, I'd call the real beats of the speed cubing industry V-Cube. Their cubes are low quality, and ridiculously overpriced. Beyond that, they use their vague patents to take advantage of other cube companies that actually have much better cubes with designs that are not vert similar. When people use the term big data for a database they have with a few million records, it's a pretty sure sign that they don't know what they're talking about. Unless the amount of data coming in every second is enough to give you a panic attack it's just a database. Every HR rep everywhere must know big data methods, must have 10 years experience with databases, get to the job and it's an Excel workbook with 60 columns, only a third of which are imported into SQL server, and yet, Somehow, we still didn't get a DBA who could manage it for almost 3 months. You've been visited by the good policy grandpa. You will be blessed with good economics and healthcare but only if you comment sleep well burner. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check out another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.